I'm Josh Rubin. I'm Mark Chin. This is the Rubin Special. And here's what you need to know this week. Today on the Rubin Special, more homes are selling for $100,000 or more over their asking price. Wall Street Bank's earnings double, leading to big bonus increases. Russian oligarchs run for the hills. And sellers can avoid these three mistakes. Redfin recently reported that there were more than 6,000 homes that sold for $100,000 over their asking price as of February 15th. This is more than the 2,200 reported in the same period in 2021. Josh, what are you seeing in the market right now? Well, I'll tell you, recently we bid on a house on Jane Street on behalf of a buyer of ours. It was asking $6.8 million. We bid 7.5 and it sold for almost $9 million. It's no secret that our clients are largely based in the financial services community. Here in the city, we're seeing banks report earnings of $192 billion. That's more than double the $90 billion reported in 2020. 2020 was already a record-breaking year for Wall Street bonuses, and 2021 is looking to be even better. Estimates are bonuses are going to be up anywhere from 15 to 50 percent, depending on where you work in the bank. No doubt that Wall Street bonuses are impacting our local real estate market with increased demand and limited supply leading to an early spring market. We're seeing Russian oligarchs run for the hills in New York City with over $1 billion of Manhattan real estate owned by them. That's right, Josh. 61 properties are already on the market tied to these Russian oligarchs, some of them having experienced price drops already. 70 more are being marketed in what are called whisper listings, which are private sales. That might be a great opportunity for people in finance to take their bonuses and put them to use. Just because we're in one of the strongest seller's markets in history doesn't mean that mistakes can't be made. Here are top three seller's mistakes that you can avoid. Pricing is one of the most critical elements to a seller's success. Mistake number one that we see a lot of sellers make is overpricing their properties. When you do that, you're not in front of the right audience, so you're forced to chase the market down by a series of price corrections until you're in front of the right audience. By then, you've already seen a number of days accumulate on the market, and people wonder what's wrong with the property. As we saw recently with the townhouse on Jane Street, they were underpriced right out of the gate, yet they still sold for more than $2 million over their asking price. The second mistake that sellers make is that in the context of a competitive bid, they focus on the highest number and not necessarily the qualifications and terms of the deal. These things can dramatically impact the chance of the deal closing. For example, a all cash buyer is often highly preferable to a financed purchaser, even if the number is a little lower. In active markets like we're seeing today, prospective sellers naturally get a sense of empowerment and that leads us to number three, which is thinking that you can sell your home on your own or what's commonly referred to as for sale by owner. This is a big mistake because of all the things that a real estate professional brings to the table. Presentation is a critical element to a successful sale. This includes professional staging and photography that ensures an emotional connection with our buyer. The next component is bringing expert negotiating skills to the table. Qualifying our buyer is a huge element to what we do, including income, assets, and any other debt that they might be carrying, because we need to look at their debt to income ratio, as well as their post-closing liquidity. This is what banks and co-op boards here in the city look at. Finally, assembling the right team to ensure that there's a smooth path to the closing table.